Hey there, what's poppin' everybody? My name is Rabbit, and we are finally ready to explore some more bonus content for our 100% item guide and walkthrough for Legend of Lagaya. Here in episode 120, we are going to be focusing on what remains at the Muscle Dome in Seoul. And then in episode 121, we will be tackling the optional boss that I know you guys have very eagerly been awaiting. But before we go ahead and head on over to Seoul, we have two things that we need to do first. The first of those two tasks is for me to kind of give you guys a recap as to what transpired without you as I made my way through Juggernaut and back to the outside world. It's nice to finally breathe some fresh air again. Well, I'm sure you guys can see the obvious that there were changes to levels. Everyone gained two as I was making my way through, just sort of rotating the Crimson Book around. Not really anything too spectacular. But what is kind of spectacular is when I was specifically in the area that had the hidden metal goblet. So, you know, it was the area that I told you guys I, I'm guessing is supposed to be akin to the lungs. Either way, in that weird winding like lung-like area, there are Camaros that can appear level three, obviously, very adorable and bright yellow. I was very lucky and managed to steal a spirit talisman from one. I wasn't even trying to, only one person had an evil god icon equipped, but here is the information for that. So it's basically an upgrade from the spirit jewel. Uh, so MP use down two, and you consume 50% less mana when you summon a Seru into combat with you. So I thought that was important to highlight that if you are feeling like you're struggling a little bit, you can either buy one of these. I couldn't tell you where they are. I honestly don't have it memorized and I have no idea. But if you are a cheap ass and weren't gonna drop the cash for it either way, you are welcome to dance with those level three Camaros and see if you can go ahead and just steal one. RNG might be on your side like it was on mine. So. There is that. And then the second thing we want to do before we head to Seoul, and I know this is going to seem a bit out of place, but we want to walk over to the Hunter Spring. You cannot actually use a Door of Wind to get here for whatever reason, I guess because it's not technically a town, but the monsters here are from way back at the beginning of the game. So if it's a problem for you to walk from Juggernaut to the Hunter Spring, you've got bigger problems <laughs> than, than just the annoyance of, you know, having to walk the distance. So I think it shouldn't be an issue. Just walk on over, maybe two fights or possibly just the one. We'll see if anyone jumps out at us here at the bushes. And no, they do not. Another advantage to coming here is we're pretty fucked up just from running out of juggernaut so it doesn't hurt to check the spring drink the water replenish our hp and mp for free and effortlessly we don't have to dick around with an inn or anything and well your lesum yeah do you wish to buy something thought that was his name so yes there is something we wish to buy so ignore all of this garbage. What we're specifically here for is the Defender Chain. So I know you're probably thinking, what the fuck is this for, Rabbit? This seems a little random, and it's not like you to want to spend money on anything. Well, you're right about both of those. So shut the fuck up. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> but no, honestly, I'll show you guys what this is for very shortly. Just make sure you pick one up. It adds to your points. So, you know, whatever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All of that. And... That is it for Lesum. So it's been a while, friend. You guys are lucky you weren't at Rim Elm because it is a fucking beast right now. So yeah, this guy even says the monster laying siege to Rim Elm is getting bigger and bigger, I hear. Someday it might engulf the whole world. Yeah, I think that's Songy's plan. Oh, also, as a quick aside, I didn't even think to talk to them when we were going through Juggernaut, but when we were exploring the section where we finally found some of the inhabitants of Rim Elm, and you know, most of them were in pain and were upset, there was a section off to the right-hand side of where the village elder was. There was no treasure over there, which is why I didn't highlight it, but I thought about it afterwards that I maybe still should have shown you because you'll find, what is his stupid name, Ixus? The dude who he and his mom were talking shit to Vaughn and they were like, well, Ixus could have saved the world too if he had a Rasaru, or Ixus is like, well, now that the world is saved, I'm just as good of a hunter as you. Anyway, they're both salty dogs, but I found them on a platform to the right 
of the village elder and Ixus basically was being obnoxious and was telling Vaughn, you said that all of the mist was gone. What's going on, Vaughn? Am I going to die like this? Blah, blah, blah. It's all your fault. He's just always mad because bad. I mean, we all know people like this. They'll bitch about the fact that they have nothing to bitch about. So let's go ahead and just teleport to Seoul. I mean, I know that doesn't have any major significance, but I still thought I'd share it with you either way. So I think that's it for all of our prep stuff. We did our recap. You see everyone got plus two to their levels. I showed you the spirit talisman that we got from the level three Camaros. And you saw that we picked up that handy dandy defender chain from Lesum at the Hunter Spring. So let's head on up to the Muscle Dome. And you will see very shortly what we will be focusing on. Although I think you probably have a feeling. I have no idea how long this episode is going to take. I'm torn as to whether or not I want to skip some of the earlier difficulties of the courses and just show you the master course. But you know, for those of you who aren't going to be playing, maybe it would be nicer for me to show you everything. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's okay if this ends up being like an, a half an hour episode, right? Well, welcome to Muscle Paradise. This is the sign-up counter for the Coliseum Zone. So we do want to go ahead and enter the various courses here in the tournament. You want to enter? Wonderful. The fee for registering is 100 tokens. You should have plenty of tokens. If not, you can just fucking buy some. You should have plenty of money just from running outside of Juggernaut. So that should not be a barrier for you to participate in this. So let's just go ahead and pay the fee and enter. So first, tell me which one of you will be entering. Ooh, I actually don't know what Vaughn has equipped right now. So maybe I should take care. Well, it'll be fine for the initial ones, but make sure, I guess, if your levels are a lot lower than mine or you're doing this a little bit earlier than I am right now, that you've got kind of a strategy. I'm not going to spend too much time making recommendations, at least not for the earlier courses. But again, let's just go in and pick Vaughn, whatever. So very well, I will now register Vaughn for the tournament. There are three levels in the tournament. Which do you want to enter? So like I was starting to say, but I figured it might just be better to talk about it when we can see the three different courses here. There's beginner, expert, and master. Beginner and expert, I mean, I'm sure some of you might have a strategy for it, especially if you undertake this much earlier, and they will pose a bit more difficulty than they probably will to my team now that we're all like levels 43, 42, something like that. The one that I will absolutely take the time to share with you a great strategy for getting through this in one go, we'll worry about that when we worry about the course itself. So let's just go ahead and run through beginner. Let's run through expert. Like I said, no strategies. We're just gonna, you know, head on through and pray that it works out okay. And hopefully this will be fast. Like I said, I was dancing around for a quick minute. The idea of maybe just running through these first two solo, but you know, it's fine. This should be so straightforward and so easy <laughs> that hopefully it won't be a problem and we'll make all of our money back from our registration fee, which I'm thinking will definitely be the case. But ah yes, the Coliseum Zone, the tournament. I. I never remember exactly what it's officially called, but <laughs> but I am totally digging, you know, this little display here. We've got Gala and Noah just backing us up and supporting us the whole way. So I'm literally just going to spam through, like, <laughs> this is nothing. I've got my full Rasaru equipment on. Meta's in tow. Like, these monsters are probably thinking, why is he even... Why is he even here? This is clearly not for him. But, you know, I figure if you're going to do one, might as well do them all, right? So you can see all of the information that very quickly displays. I'm not spamming through it, so my apologies if you aren't getting to get a glimpse of everything. That is the game not wanting to waste its time, I guess. And some of these things will make more sense when we're actually needing to plot and plan what we're doing in between fights and in between rounds. So hopefully, you know, you guys are doing okay. I say, you know, grab yourself a cup of coffee, grab yourself a cup of tea, because, you know, beginner and expert are not even a big deal. Hence why I was saying that it might be best for me to not even... Not even showcase it, but... Oh, yeah, Karuven. Remember when you used to be a problem? 
Well, you're not anymore, my friend. You are not anymore. Hopefully all of you are doing well. I am still doing okay, you know, just going through the motions and prepping myself for my big transition. So I'm looking forward to everything that's going on in my life. I would love to hear how things are going on in yours. And yeah, I don't know, Gola Gola after Karubin. Come on, game. Is this even <laughs> is this even fair? The Gola Gola was probably thinking, God, don't send me into the ring. But it looks like we're not killing them. We're just knocking them out. As is the goal in boxing, right? Okay, so total recover, finish bonus, blah, blah, blah. Round six. Round six. Let's go. And this time, hey, a somewhat familiar face. It's Zito in crab form. Oh, he actually is going to take more than one more than one round for Von here. But I don't think he's going to have a chance to issue his bullshit. We're just going to do the same <laughs> where I'm just going to auto my way through. And <gasps> Zito, you devil, you holding on for dear life. I suppose we had it coming, though. I mean, and look. Without even spiriting, that did basically nothing. Let's try this a third time. All right, that's what Zito needed. So that uppercut sealed the deal. <laughs> and we're not sweating it. You do recover a little bit in between each round. And I'm sure some of you are thinking, for now, it doesn't seem like it's that necessary or valuable. But it will matter when we do the master course. So honestly, that's kind of what I really want to be the focus of this episode. The master course is where things can get a bit hairy and whew, you might be sweating bullets. But over the years, like just between forum threads that I've read and guides that I had read, I've seen a lot of interesting strategies for undertaking this, and out of all of them that I attempted, I found one that I think consistently works the best, and that is the one that I will be showcasing for you. So you can look forward to that, hopefully in the next, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> and I say 10 minutes because I have no idea how long the next level of courses will be. So, you know, we'll see. And Zane, what's good? What's good, Zane? If you really wanted to, because you're not feeling just the spamming through autos, you're welcome to summon your Seru into battle if you think they will help you out a little bit. Like again, if you want to go back to my old cheese strategy with Koru, you can just summon a bunch of Kamaros and Kamara will get the job done if you don't feel like doing it yourself. But I think especially through this course, like it's, I don't think it's worth complicating it if you want to have a show on in the background and just literally spam your X button. You should be able to get through the whole thing without needing to scroll through too much stuff. And yeah, thanks to his crazy wombo combo there, he gave me the AP I needed to deal more damage. Listen, listen Zane, you're not scaring me. Hopefully he'll go down after another round or two. He's falling over, so maybe one more turn on Vaughn's end will be enough to take him out. If you're feeling a little worried, by all means, go ahead and summon Spoon or use an item. It's whatever. But I, I'm no pussy. I'm going to make sure we end this battle with some flair and a tornado flame in this bitch. Okay, so he is donezo as well. Hopefully we are approaching the end. I think each course has 12 rounds. I believe so. Don't don't quote me on that. I mean, I guess we'll, you know, find out if you've been watching this. I wasn't even paying attention to the counter because it went by so fast. But anyway, the winner is Vaughn. Vaughn, that was a good fight. Well done. We hope you enter again. Contestant Vaughn is awarded 818 tokens. So that's a way to go ahead and get some tokens too. I still think it's more efficient. You know, when you're coming here the, for the very first time and you're trying to buy all those Soru breads and all the other shit to go ahead and just play the slots. But I don't know if you feel more confident going through uh, the Coliseum Zone in Muscle Paradise 
and entering the tournament, I mean, by all means, be my fucking guest. So we'll go ahead and pay the fee. And same as last time. I guess if you wanted to, you could use Noah or Gala. I mean, I don't really think it matters. So I'm just going to stick with Vaughn because he's the first one up. And we're going to go into expert mode. So you saw I did check because I couldn't remember if they heal you completely Welcome in between the each of the courses in the tournament. But they did. So go ahead and just, you know, you can do it back to run back. There's no need to run down to the end to rest up and then come back up here. You should be good to go. So same situation as last time. I think here in the expert level, it honestly shouldn't cause you too many problems. The only difference between this level and the beginner level is I think you might have to spend a bit more time healing. Uh, and you might, to optimize specific fights, want to have a round of spiriting, whereas before I... I didn't even worry about it. I literally was just spamming the X button on my PlayStation controller because why not? Wanted to get through it. Don't want this to be like a super long video, but I did still want you to be able to see the different opponents that we'll be facing for each various level of the tournament. So again, these initial ones are a piece of fucking cake. I know some people were asking me why I waited so long to come back here so initially i told you guys i had heard so back when we were in seoul for the first time someone said a long time ago to me that if you access these a little too early and go through them a little bit too early you can glitch yourself and i don't want to like spoil out of what but there's a glitch that does happen as a result so i've always just felt like there's no need to rush it then, whether that's true or not. You know, maybe some of you can confirm because I genuinely do not know if that is an accurate statement or not. I mean, you never know. But either way you slice it or dice it, I just figured better safe than sorry, especially for the sake of a 100% item guide and walkthrough. Why would I risk it? There are no biscuits, so I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit. So I figured... Just wait until we're almost done and then we can highlight it now. It'll be easier so the whole process will go by faster and ideally we can isolate all of the different courses to one episode anyway. So this guy is actually causing me a little bit of trouble. As you can see, Vaughn is already in the yellow. So I am thinking I am going to go ahead and just heal myself up because I don't trust this motherfucker and dying would be super embarrassing for Vaughn. <laughs> not really for me, you know. It's not high stakes on my end, but I'm sure he would appreciate a heal here. So let's go ahead and do it. So this ogre thing, well, I wouldn't say he's tough. He's blocking like a bitch and being a tad bit obnoxious. But that's okay, because we're not in the baby mode. We're no longer in beginner. We are in expert. So you can probably also see that Vaughn doesn't have his Rasaru armor or his Rasaru weapon equipped. So as you can see, it's sort of raising the stakes with each course. So I'm sure already you're imagining, well, oh my God, if expert mode strips you of all this, what is the master course going to be like? Ho oh, ho, my friends, the master course is no fucking joke. So I'm kind of like shooting the shit with you and talking bullshit right now. I will not be able to necessarily do that. Um, so, like I said, if it's easier for you, especially in here, just to, you know, switch it up and show you something new instead of just me spamming through auto, you can go ahead and bring Kamaro. I think, again, to come back to what I stated back when we did the Koru fight, I personally believe that Kamaro is a wonderful Seru in terms of how much mana it costs to summon him and then how much damage he can actually do. So Kamaro is fantastic. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't say he's my favorite Seru, but if you're just trying to grind through fights and you feel like using magic is the best course of action, Kamaro is the best, I think, for all of that. Obviously, something like Gilliam is going to do more damage, but Gilliam's also going to cost significantly more mana. So hopefully that makes sense. I feel like I never do that good of a job explaining my rationale because I'm like planning everything while I'm talking. 
<laughs> Guys, I should probably take more notes before doing walkthroughs, but whatever. Hopefully that's part of my charm, right? That I'm just like, hey, welcome aboard. Let me casually walk you through what I'm doing and hopefully it makes sense. And even if it doesn't, you're seeing what I'm doing and maybe you can kind of piece together my fragmented thinking and, you know, come to your own conclusion as to why I opted for what I did. So again, let's just start out with the Camaro just to make our second turn a bit easier. We should be able to just auto attack through. I'm imagining we'll absorb a bit of damage, which will raise our AP, which will mean hopefully more combinations will be automatically strung together when I just auto through the attack sequence for Vaughn. So we'll see how it goes. What I also like about Camaro is his summon animation or his spell animation doesn't take as long as I think some of the others do, but they're all a bit tedious to watch for like the fifth time and onward. They just, they just take a bit of time, but Iron Man was not happy about being speared, which I get, it's totally valid. So let's see if we can auto attack him the rest of the way. And that was the case. I hope you guys don't hear the popping every time I take a, a sip of my tea. I have it in one of those, it's like a, it has a plastic lid on it. One of those to-go cups for coffee. And this one, I guess, is just a little bit unhappy with me because my, my tea was super hot, so it's kind of puffing on the inside. Anyway, all of that just to say, hopefully every time I take a sip, you're not hearing a pop, 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 because it kind of pops out, pops in, you know. Guys, I swear, I'm not, I'm not drunk. I actually had someone comment on an earlier episode, something like, Rabbit, you always seem very happy when you're recording these episodes. Do you drink before you play every single Let's Play or every single recording session for a Let's Play or a walkthrough or whatever it is you're conducting? And I, one, I think that's hilarious and it kind of makes me happy that my joy sort of shines through because I think video games should be a happy thing, right? I mean, yeah, it's okay if something frustrates you. I definitely have played games where I'm like, this is bullshit, this makes me so mad. Had a couple of those fights in Jade Cocoon 2 that were absolute garbage. However, I think for the most part, I've talked about this before in different Let's Plays. I don't know if I've talked about it in this one specifically. But I think a lot of people on the internet, especially relatively recently, I think people look for things to be mad about and are always pissed off about something, which is partially why I've become a bit more withdrawn when it comes to my internet interactions. I just feel like a lot of people aren't super trustworthy because a lot of folks are kind of looking out for themselves or you know, maybe they're not happy with their real life, so they turn to the internet to either take out those frustrations or to Wrong seek validation for their insecurities. And, you know, that's fine if it's a way for them to cope, but it's very frustrating when you kind of give someone all of your heart and, you know, you put yourself out there and you are vulnerable and then they take advantage of that either by lying or, you know, stealing or, you know, stealing is kind of hard to do online unless you're like giving someone access to very specific information. But you know what I mean, where they just in general take advantage of your kindness and take advantage of your vulnerability. And I found that just on the internet, a lot of people, especially now it seems relative to what the internet was when I was much younger and it was still kind of a new burgeoning thing and it wasn't as much social media or at least not as much emphasis on social media for comp competition. I guess competitive interaction is probably a better way of framing it, but hopefully you guys can kind of understand what I'm saying. So anyway, I feel like when it comes to online goings-ons, a lot of people are very underhanded in their motives and they have a specific goal of either manipulating other people to get what they want, whether it's people they're working with or people that they want to become viewers or patrons or, I don't know, subscribers, followers, whatever the fuck platform we're referring to. And I just never wanted to be that way. I think that's why I've always stated, especially when it comes to people donating to me, either through Patreon or directly through uh, like PayPal or that coffee app and or website. I always say like, I want it to just be because you want to donate. Like I have 
a career and I have everything I need in real life. I don't need the internet to supplement anything in terms of making me feel better about who I am or to fulfill a part of my life that's missing. Like I'm on here because I want to be and because it's genuinely fun for me and I want to structure sort of a safe haven for those of you who are also seeking that and you don't want any of the manipulative tactics of, yeah, if you like this, leave a comment and thumbs up and subscribe. You know, just the the joke going on now is like, you know, like, comment, subscribe for anything or, you know, let's smash that like button or let's crush, let's crush that like button. Like, I don't know, just there's nothing necessarily wrong, I guess, with people wanting to involve their audience. But when they're doing it for the sake of just profiting more it just feels underhanded and slimy and I never wanted to come across that way so I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second but anyway the winner is Von Von we saw this just when we completed the last course again she states that was a good fight well done we hope you enter again and this time we got 1532 so that's nice 1532 tokens again just because I'm a little paranoid I'm gonna check to make sure they brought us back up to speed and they did so here is where I really want to kind of emphasize the change that is going to need to happen before we undertake the master course. So I'm going to apologize in advance. We're already around that 26 minute mark. So this is probably going to be close to 40 minutes long, which isn't a huge deal. But, you know, like I said earlier, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some biscuits to munch on because this is going to be a long episode. So what we want to do before we undertake the master course, I want to start off by immediately reminding you we did pick up a defender chain. So let's take a look at the actual information. I kind of breezed through that. So the defender chain gives you shield boost, which increases the rate of your successful blocks. So we're going to want to have that because Things are going to be very hairy and very scary when we go into the master course. The second thing that I think is fairly important to have is the life grail because it gives you HP after, which recovers some HP after each turn. While it is true that you do generate HP in between each round, you are not going to have access to Seru in this upcoming course. So you're going to have to have a way to heal yourself consistently. So go ahead and put that on. And then for this last slot, this is gonna seem kind of silly, but this is absolutely necessary. You're gonna want the Wonder Amulet, which gives you Master Guard, which nullifies against all abnormal attacks or abnormal status effects. So this is kind of what I have on Vaughn. You know, if you feel like you have a better strategy or a better set of accessories, I guess maybe you can argue that the Defender Chain could be swapped out for something else. I personally feel like the Life Grail is absolutely necessary. And similarly, the Wonder Amulet, you're not going to make it through here if you don't have this. Like, it will fuck you up. We'll talk about it a little more when we come to the specific uh, rounds or the specific fights where it will come into play and make the difference. But for now... Again, I'm just giving you a second to look at what I've got. You have been warned if you're trying to undertake this alongside me. This is what I think is going to set you up for the greatest amount of success. Regarding actual levels of party members, Vaughn is at level 43. I will be honest with you and say that being closer to like level 45 might be better. But I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think the lowest level that I was when I undertook this in the past was like level 41, possibly. So I think 43 is fine. But if you are nervous going into it, just get to level 45 and it shouldn't be a big deal. So again, I'm just going to spam through this. We don't need to read this for the third fucking time. And we'll be ready. Yes, I know, sweet thing. We are... Here we go, friends. The point of no return. We're going into master mode. So let's do it. Let's Welcome pray that zone. we can overcome <laughs> any obstacles and challenges here. I will say Round one. rounds one through three are, again, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Not a lot of strategy is required to overcome the monsters here. So I'm just going to attack. And yes, you did see, we don't have access to items either. So I mentioned that we cannot summon our Seru. We cannot even use items for healing. So again, that's why I think the Life Grail is absolutely critical. Because look at this, 700 in one go. Like the Life Grail doesn't heal that much, but if you can get off several rounds of spiriting, 
and you're taking minimal damage, I mean, that Life Grail is going to fucking hook you up. It's going to hook you up so hard. So, we made it through this first one. Like I said, one through three shouldn't be a challenge. So, I think I can go back to what I was stating because I shouldn't have to do too much thinking here. But I'll try to keep my eyes on Vaughn's HP because dying would suck donkey balls. But yeah, so anyway, like I was saying, uh, back to the comment that someone made about, oh my gosh, Rabbit, do you always take a couple drinks before you play for the channel? And yeah, so I was explaining that I always have found it a little bit hard to trust people that seem too manipulative with how they talk to their audience, especially when it comes to asking for involvement in things or asking for patronage. So, and especially since I have been burned multiple times making myself vulnerable to collaborations with people whose motives are not the same as mine, I've kind of become a little bit more withdrawn when it comes to interacting with other people on YouTube or on whatever website you're using. So anyway, all of that is being shared just to say that it means a lot to me that the joy that I feel on the inside kind of shines through in my walkthroughs, in the blind playthroughs, or in sort of the in-between general let's plays. Because that's always been my goal from the beginning. I have never wanted this to be a place where I could become super popular or super famous. I've never felt like I needed to be in competition with other people. I just wanted a way to share my love for retro video games. Like, I love modern games too, but like specifically these old gems that a lot of people either overlooked or vaguely remember. I just wanted to relive my childhood and kind of take you along that journey with me and, you know, present to people who also are interested in more of the obscure retro video games, like present to you some options that maybe you hadn't ever heard of before or seen before. So that's always been the goal. That will always be my goal, regardless of what the channel morphs into. And because of that, I think it's easy and natural for me to just be happy because it's like, hey, I get to sit down bright and early in the morning before I start my work day or, you know, occasionally I'll record in the evening, but not really too much because I never know if I'm coming home from work at like 6 p.m. or if I'm going to be working late or if I'm traveling. You know, it's just easier for me to record in the mornings and I'm 100% a morning person. So yeah, it just works out for me and I absolutely love that I appear slightly intoxicated to you guys because this is a blast for me. I hope it's a blast for you regardless of what game I'm playing. Even when I'm talking about boring random bullshit like my day or someone that pissed me off at Walgreens or just something random that I saw in the park. It just makes me happy to be able to share these parts of my life with you and to have you guys share in return. I don't know. It brings me a lot of joy. So anyway, Karubin was a total <laughs> pussy. Uh, round four, I guess I should comment that even though this one's not a difficult round, if you were a lower level than I was coming into it, I would recommend using round four as a chance to do a lot of spiriting so that you can kind of heal off your life grail. Because here on round five, or I, just, I suppose I should say in round five, we're going to be dealing with Zito's bitch ass again. And you know he's got his little stupid wave shits. So not a super strategy required here, but I'm going to open by auto attacking just to get off a little bit of damage. And I'm going to minimize the impact of his wave bullshit. So kind of like when we actually fought Zito, you may recall I told you, he's pretty predictable. I'm just gonna use this as a chance to spirit, minimize his impact, get up my AP bar as well as the combo bar, I don't know. Both of them are gauges and bars. And that's all that's really gonna be required for this fight, just being mindful of spiriting before he does his shit, but he's so predictable. It should be easy. And I think we were at 100% HP, or we not? So same deal as just a second ago. He's gonna call wave, I'm gonna spirit, replenish my HP from the life grail, and be able to take him out in our next turn. So it works out for me. And it's nice because, you know, hopefully we'll be able to go into the next fight with 100% HP, and because I took that life armband off Vaughn, you can see we're no longer over the 3,000 HP. So it's not 
super troublesome or worrisome, but it's something I still want to point out to you guys that you're not rocking as much AP as you might have been if you were following my accessory builds as well up until this point. So anyway, that's it for Zito. He was not a big deal. So, round six. I, <laughs> I'm not going to say I told you so, but if you didn't follow my advice for how to equip Vaughn or Noah or Gala or whomever you decided to take into this, round six is going to bring you a fucking bad time because, yes, it is Berserker, my worst nightmare. I fucking hate him. I will never stop hating this motherfucker till the day I die. He is my least favorite boss probably across almost every single video game I play. So just from recalling what we've dealt with in the past when fucking around with Berserker, you know he has the ability to apply status effects to you. And if you didn't bring the Wonder Amulet, sucks to be you. You better pray that he doesn't do his little... I don't remember if it's called like Spore... Yeah, Spore Gas. I was just starting to say. I was going to say Spore Breath. But yeah, he's going to do this shit to you. And it's going to fuck you up. And it's going to suck donkey balls. So, again, it's, it's totally up to you. But I would strongly recommend that Wonder Amulet because... I mean, he's doing nothing to me. Except triggering me by reminding me of the first time we dealt with him back at the Sky Gardens in Jeremy. <laughs> Whew, that was not a good time. <laughs> I hate Berserker so much. And yeah, this Stone Circle shit. Dude, do you guys recall how fucking rough that fight was? It sucked ass. It was so unfun. But we made it. I almost died. That was the only time I'd say through this Let's Play. We've come very close to getting that game over screen. But somehow, somehow I made it through. And we're making it through again. So perhaps the game just wants you to conquer your fears because it brings Berserker back multiple times, which is bad news for me. But if he doesn't cause you, you problem, then a problem, then I guess it's fine, right? So round seven is easy. I mean, I'm not going to tell you too much about it other than use this as an opportunity if Berserker did give you a hard time to go ahead and heal up. So we're at full HP. I'm just going to start with some auto attacks just to get off a little bit of damage onto Zane here. But wrapping up what I've been trying to tell you guys for the last 10-ish minutes, I just found that comment about someone <laughs> referencing my joyful demeanor and general disposition very... I don't know, just comforting because I always want to come across that way, but I never know if I do, especially because some of the videos that I conduct are a little bit more serious than others. So for example, when I'm doing the 100% guides or the walkthroughs, they don't have the same tone as a blind let's play or even, ooh, he's charging up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually spirit again. We'll get our AP gauge to 100% will minimize the impact of this nonsense and then we should be able to deal quite a lot of damage to him in our upcoming turn so I think that's going to be the best course of action for us here yeah I think that was a good choice what do you guys say I say yeah yes so we'll see how much we can do he may or may not die after this we'll have to see oh god maybe not well, what I'm going to do, because he does a lot of damage, I might spirit for two turns, maybe three. I think this is the best time to go ahead and just regen as much as possible. But anyway, so to finish that sort of strange thought there, um, the, the tone and mood of different series that I conduct fluctuates depending on the goal. So like a walkthrough, I tend to have it be a little bit more serious or it's not as sprinkled with life stories or random musings as like a blind playthrough where I don't really know what's coming up and if there's a lot of grinding then I just sort of I'm running around you know talking to you about <laughs> nonsense and bullshit dude are you kidding me Zane well whatever it'll give us more time to heal right and then you know like the in-betweeners where I played the games before but I, I definitely haven't played them enough to tell you that this is going to be a 100% run or this shouldn't qualify as an actual walkthrough by any means those are also pretty lighthearted, and it's kind of just like oh we'll just take it one step at a time and and see what happens okay I hope we can kill him because 
I don't think we're we're in the positive here with the healings that we've been doing. But I, I think it should be okay. Oh, actually, give me one second, my friends. I'm getting a phone call at fucking six in the morning. What is this? Okay, sorry about that, friends. Uh, very randomly, a a misdial. Like the person was like, oh, is this Susan? No, this is not Susan. And it's like not far after 6 a.m. Who is Susan and why are you calling her at like <laughs> 6 Oh, something in the morning. I uh, I don't know. If I was Susan, I wouldn't want you to have my cell phone number either. But I get it. I get it. Anyway, the lady was like really nice. But how random is that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I don't even remember what I was telling you guys because that was the weirdest minute long phone call I've ever had. And she sounded confused too. Like, are you sure you're not Susan? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty fucking sure I'm not Susan. But give me a second. Let me grab my driver's license and I'll check for you. Anyway, my apologies for the pause right there. But like I was kind of just trying to say, even though this contradicts it because this is a walkthrough and yet I guess I've spent the last, you know, 40 some minutes talking to you about bullshit basically because we are just kind of making our way through the various courses here at the Muscle Dome. But, you know, since the mood and tone of the series that I conduct, it changes depending on my goal Sometimes I just feel bad and I feel like I can't be as much of myself as I want to. And I shouldn't even say that. I'm always myself. Like, there are no personas here on this channel, which is something I really dislike about a lot of other people on YouTube is that you can tell the way they present themselves online is nothing like who they are in real life. So if you ran into them in real life, you might not even recognize them because they probably don't look the same way or they don't talk the same way or act the same way. I just, I don't know. I just really don't like that. It feels fuzzy to me. So I am 100% me online as I am in real life. I'm always this weird. I'm always this awkward. But, you know, I like to have a good time. And I think it's something that's kind of cool about me. And all right, Zane, I get it. You are being a dick. Maybe we should just risk it and try to kill. I don't know. I'm hoping that he'll do his little, like, storage shit because I'm desperately trying to heal up. But I don't know. We might just have to brave it and pray that this takes him down. This is a great round usually for heals, but he's, like, not having it. But it's okay. He's dead anyway. So whatever. Whatever. But okay, I guess I've been taking way too long just to say thank you for those of you who think that my spirit is very lively and lighthearted and jovial. And I know Vaughn, you can see, has tears going down his cheeks because that took a really long time. He got his ass kicked a little bit. Noah's teared up. Gala has his back to us like a dick. It's like, brah, really? And yes, we have Dahati. And thank God it healed us up a bit. I'm going to go ahead and start out with some spiriting because... I don't want to prolong the inevitable here. Not in the slightest. Now this fight is going to take for fucking ever. I believe Dahadi has a lot of HP. So it kind of sucks, but he shouldn't be a major challenge. Like he doesn't, at least not from what I recall, do a lot of damage to you. It just takes forever to fucking kill him because we don't have our equipment and our armor and all that other good stuff. So we have our accessories, obviously, but that's that's all we've got going into this. So, you know, this might take a couple of minutes for us to whittle him down, but whatever. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> thank you for those of you who noted that I seem very happy across all games and, you know, whatever my objective is, even though, you know, sometimes I may not be able to or I may not feel as comfortable just talking about random musings because I feel like it might be out of place in the walkthroughs relative to just the random playthroughs or the blind let's plays or what have you. You know, I want the walkthroughs to seem more sequential and to have a little bit more order to them because I know, especially the Star Ocean, the second story, that's my number one series on the channel, which is really interesting because a lot of other people have played the game too, but I guess very few have done like a detailed, thorough guide like I have. And I actually feel bad because, you know, the quality is not the absolute best because I recorded it back before I had upgraded 
uh, my microphone, and actually, I think that was it. I think that's all that was really lacking in that was that my microphone was not top notch. But everything else was fine. Like, I still had the Elgato, so it was recording straight from the actual PlayStation, so it looked fine. But I think, like, the audio wasn't the best. And there were a couple episodes where I even had to use, like, a different microphone because Andrew was using my good microphone for some school stuff. So, anyway, I feel bad because I want my walkthroughs to feel more professional, I guess, than some of the other series. But, you know, professional for me is still a casual type of professional. Like, I wouldn't say professional rabbit is a hoity-toity person or personality. It's just more, more orderly most of the time. Obviously, you know, this is a walkthrough and I'd hardly say that most episodes feel super, you know, well thought out. It's just kind of, all right, I'm at the, this point of the game where I usually do this. So let me tell you why I'm doing it and hopefully you get it. And <laughs> we can talk about it in the comments if you have any questions about it, because I don't have like a script or anything. I just kind of free formally speak. I would say I have the gift of gab. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> I have no problem talking at all. I think it just comes though from years of teaching and giving presentations. You just get very comfortable talking and you don't feel that awkwardness or have that issue where even if your brain kind of lapses and you're like, oh shit, what was I just saying or where was I going with this? It's not a problem. You're just like, well, I don't remember. So let's talk about something else that's kind of relevant or that I'm thinking about now. So I will say that's always been kind of a gift I've had. I do not have any problems just talking. <laughs> Even as a child, I, was, I wasn't like a super chatty kid. So Andrew, my husband, has always had the gift of gab. And even if you look at some of his like elementary school awards, he got like motor mouth multiple years in a row in elementary school. Like I, what kind of award is that? I don't know, I guess I just wanted all the kids to feel special. But he truly has the gift of gab and loves to talk. I wouldn't say that I love to talk, but I don't have a problem talking and it's a comfortable position for me to be put in. Like, it's really not a big deal at all for me to be put on a platform and have to talk to strangers or someone that I've met once or twice. Like, I don't fucking care. I can talk to a total stranger on the bus for an hour. Not an issue whatsoever. So, you know, I just think it's something that translates well into let's playing regardless of whether I'm wanting it to be a professional or casual series because you know I'll just talk my way through everything and hopefully you follow along and <laughs> I'm very open to feedback always and suggestions so if people have better ways of doing things you know I love talking about it because video games are fun and and a good time and I want them to be or at least I want my series to feel that way for you guys too so we are still here. I guess I should bring this back to what's going on with Zahadi because I really haven't been paying that much attention. He just takes for fucking ever. Like I already said when we first started with him, his HP is just so high. I can't remember. It's somewhere around like 30,000. I guess you guys can kind of do the math and calculate roughly how much I did to him. So it just takes a really long time. But it was easy, like I noted as well, regarding how much damage you'll be taking from him. So it's a good fight to try to heal up a little bit. So, rounds 9 through 11, oh yeah, we are seeing some familiar faces. We've got the Delilahs, folks. We've got Lou here. I'm just going to open, well, you know what? I'm going to actually attack her first. I wouldn't say there's really a strategy to this either. Well, let me just lump them together. For rounds 9, 10, and 11, I wouldn't say there's a strong strategy I think they're pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to fight her. And oh, I should take this as an opportunity, especially kind of thinking back on what we just faced with Dahadi. You guys are seeing that in spite of the fact that I am not blocking, Vaughn is, or not blocking, I'm not spiriting. I'm blocking a fair amount of damage. And that is thanks to that defender chain. So, you know, I kind of was talking to you guys about the fact that it's a negotiable accessory, but I think it's somewhat critical. Especially for the, this master course because you don't have access to your items. You don't have access to your healing serum. So 
what's a good way to minimize how much damage you're taking? I mean, you can spend a long time spiriting and trying to heal up, but we saw when I was doing that with Zane, it doesn't always work out okay because he still dealt a fair amount of damage. But the defender chain, even when you're not taking a turn to spirit, can help you out a little bit. So I just wanted to point out that, look at this. Yeah, she got 60 damage off thanks to the defender chain. So even though I said it's somewhat negotiable, I still want to reemphasize that I think it is a critical part of the package accessorizing that I did for Vaughn or whomever you're going to be taking through the master course. All right. <laughs> and her uppercut is painful. So if you want, I guess what you can do is go through, you know, a, a series of attacking, attacking, and then spiriting if you want to, you know, minimize that bullshit that she does for her third turn. But it's up to you. Like, she hasn't been doing very much to me at all. So I personally don't feel like it's a huge deal. But again, if your levels are a bit lower than mine, you might want to go through the sequence of attacker, attacker, spirit to block her plasma strike. At least I think that's what her shit is called. We'll just do it now so you can see. And it'll be nice because hopefully that means this final turn of mine, I should be able to kill her. Well, we'll find out, won't we? And we are not too far from being done, friends. I know, we're coming up on an hour. This might be the longest episode of any series that I've done. Maybe? I think so. Star Ocean, the second story had, I did a showcase of like a, an optional battle mode. And I think that one was like 45 minutes. So we're over that. And I think that was previously the longest episode that I've done of something. So we're probably going to hit an hour. That's a little bit crazy, but hey, that's okay. We're looking at everything. Like I said, we could have saved ourselves like 15 to 20 minutes by me skipping the beginner and expert courses, but you know, I figured let's just go ahead and showcase them for you guys. All right, so we've got Che here, and like I just said with Lou, I think it's fairly straightforward. So if you want, you can try to do some spiriting whenever you think it's necessary. But thanks to that defender chain, I think I'm going to be okay to just attack him as much as possible. If you want, you can spirit, I guess, just for the sake of having more AP to string together stuff. That's always a good time. So we can go ahead and do that, but he's not even damaging us, really, because we're blocking everything. So I think it's better in the long run for me to just go ahead and just try to whittle him down as much as possible. I don't know how much HP the Delilahs have here. I couldn't tell you, and I don't even think it's worth calculating because this is a, a fucking straightforward fight, honestly. So we're going to take a, a bit of a walloping here. He does quite a bit of damage, but that's okay. I am going to now go into the pattern that I was sharing with you for Lou, where I can attack, attack, and then spirit up. I think that'll be fine. Especially because we don't want to take another one of those to the face. No, thank y'all. But thanks to that life grail and the defender chain, we're not too low at all. And this will be nice because following all of his nonsense, we'll be able to hopefully get a lot of damage off. And yeah, he did nothing to us. Guys, I'm not joking around. There's usually a method to my madness. I know it looks so stupid going to the Hunter Spring to pick up a defender chain, but look at what a significant difference it has made. So I think I mentioned this already, but I would love to hear if you guys have a specific strategy for approaching this. Like, what do you guys typically have Vaughn or Noah or Gala equip before you go through this? I, I'm trying to think of what some other items could be that you could rely on for this. I mean, there are a lot. Obviously, like I said, I've seen really Che. Wow, I only got 356, whatever. I guess to be fair, we've had a couple terms where he's done nothing to us, so it's only fair that the same can be said for him. It's only fair, and I'm, I'm about that life, Che. He should hopefully almost be dead because he's driving me a little, a little bonkers. Okay, 
let's go ahead and spirit. But like I was starting to say, so I know I have seen personally numerous threads about ways you can undergo this entire thing a bit easier. So I know not everyone likes the defender chain and some people may not even like the life grail, but holy shit, if you're not using the life grail, I don't know. I honestly don't know how you could get through this without the life grail. Maybe, I guess some people might argue, like the Wonder Amulet, as long as you can get past Berserker and, was it Dahati or Zito that poisons you? I don't fucking remember. But I can see the argument that those might be lower tier as a priority accessory. But the Life Grail is kind of like your only means of recovering, so I don't know how people get by without it. No fucking clue. Anyway, we had another basically free turn. We were able to block all of that. Hopefully, Che. Oh, he's falling over, guys. So it's it's coming. It's fucking coming. Ooh. He got that one off. That's not too good. But we'll go ahead and speed it. And fingers crossed. One more turn. And he should be done, so. Just one more. And then, honestly, once we are done with the Delilahs, our round 12 isn't, hmm, it's not too bad. I'll kind of talk to you guys about it when we get there, hopefully in the next five minutes. <laughs> Just so this episode is not, you know, like an hour and ten minutes long, but it might come to that. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, Vaughn, please take this douchebag out. Oh my god, Che, what the fuck? Vaughn, come on, let this be a freebie. Oh yeah, baby. All right, that's perfect. So if we are lucky, he will die. We would have gotten a kill for free. Oh yes, perfect. So you guys know what to expect. Our last of the Delilahs will be Guy. And just to repeat myself, there's not really a strategy for undertaking this either. All I would recommend is the same the same thing. Just go through the motions of attacking, attacking, and then spiriting on the third time or the third turn to minimize the impact of his special attack. So we're going to do just that. We are at full HP. I am not going to waste a second damaging him, even though that did nothing. Absolutely nothing. But he didn't really do too much back to us. So yet again, like I said, second round attack. Ooh, and we got Tornado Flame off. Can we block some of this? Oh, yeah, baby. All right, let's just go ahead and Spirit. And we'll see how much he's going to do here with Blazing Slash. I still love this animation. It is legit fire. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Dude, it's everything. This is so good. I always thought it was fucking baller shit right there. It is too bad that the Delilahs couldn't kind of become friends. I think it would have been amazing to play as them. Or, you know, kind of akin to what happened with Mega Man Legends, how you got to see the game through the perspective of the enemy. So the, what was that game called? The Misadventures of Tron Bon? Is it? I might be making that up. I think that's what the game is called. It is super rare, by the way. I, I think it's the Misadventures of Tron Bon. Misadventures? Miss something of Tron Bon. <laughs> anyway, who cares? The point is that I love that you, from the Mega Man Legends world, have an opportunity to experience kind of the perspective of the bad guys. And I say that in air, quote, air quotes in a different game. I think that would have been kind of cool if... For Legend of Ligaia, you know, we could have played as the Delilah says. I mean, again, it follows the same formula where it's like one chick with two dudes. And, you know, this time they're siblings, so that could bring a fresh perspective. They don't have Rosteru, but that's okay because they have their own unique flair. So I think, I think seeing the events of, like, Conkrum and everything that happened from their eyes could have made for a fascinating game. I think so, anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and spirit here. Even though I know he's got an extra turn. But I want to go ahead and max 
out if I can my AP and we're gonna see if we can just go through Vaughn's praise. I'm thinking we've had enough autos and I mean I don't feel like we're in any hurry but you know for those of you who just kind of have this rolling I don't want this to be the longest episode in the world. I mean which it's not. I know some people post like hour long videos especially if you're showcasing something specific. Obviously this is 100% optional. Don't mind me if I don't <laughs> pay attention to what I'm entering. I will key in something totally random. But let's go ahead and get that miracle art off. Because I'm done with Yugi. We don't want to be here all fucking day dancing around the ring with ya. So, okay, we got 2,000 damage off. We may not be able to do that too often just because... Mm, it just takes so much AP. And I think in the long run, sometimes it's better to just try to get off as much damage in between each round than having multiple rounds of spiriting. But I don't know. If you if you have a style and you just love stringing together those miracle arts or specific combos of super arts and regular arts, be my fucking guess. So let's see how much... AP we have. If we're pretty freaking close, I might go ahead and spear it one more time and do... I think we'll be okay to do this because this next round, I'll go through the Miracle Arts and then we'll go right back into spiriting to minimize the impact of his special attack. So, I think this is the best way for now to tackle him because we do so much. But I don't know. Sometimes... You know, you just have to kind of weigh and gauge how much are you doing with the individual random attacks versus how much are you doing when you sort of plan out your specials or the super miracle blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go ahead and spear it. But he should be pretty much done, so I'm hoping no more than like another two to three minutes and then he will be down for the count and then round 12 round 12 may or may not take us a little bit of time you guys probably won't be surprised when you see who it is that we have for that final fight there okay let's yeah we'll just go ahead and auto it'll be fine it will be okay oh yeah he's done hallelujah so he had less HP than I was thinking he had, which is fantastic. So like I noted, again, I apologize if this episode is way too long for some of your tastes. But again, completely optional because, you know, it's a bonus segment, right? Bonus episode. Next episode is also bonus because we'll be doing what is known as an optional boss fight. So really not a big deal. Okay. Anyway, so here we go. What I would recommend for this fight is just kind of alternating between your physical attacks and then the spiriting, at least until she runs out of mana, because once she runs out of mana, she won't be casting this absolutely obnoxious bullshit magic spell, whatever it's fucking called. We'll see very shortly. I don't remember what the fuck it's called, but hey, 1100 damage. I'll take it. Oh, and what's nice is, hmm, she actually did no damage that turn. So even though I said alternating attacks and spirits is the way to go, I'm just going to be greedy. So yeah, this glare garbage will pass eventually. I promise it will. <laughs> it, it can be a pain in the ass, but whatever. So I think I might actually be okay to just attack her randomly each time. Ooh, uh, salty bitch. I guess she was mad because she did nothing for two turns. Which translates to nice rounds for me. Yes, and another 1,200. I have never really tracked the HP of these other ones. Okay, here we go. Here is her bullshit. Ugh. It's a pain in the ass. I know, you guys. And this is where, in the past, I 
I have died when I didn't do the, you know, the life grail strategy. So again, you know, having that defender chain and the life grail is going to make a difference here. If you even made it this far without those two things. Like I already mentioned, I would love to hear if you have a specific strategy for undertaking this master course. I just like to hear, you know, what some of you kind of come up with. So I'm actually going to Spirit again. I might try, and depending on what she does next, we may try just getting a round of the Miracle Arts off. Because I think it's a good idea for us to heal up anyway, so we're not losing too much here by... Ooh, we're so close. So hopefully she'll do Darkness type soon. She should have enough mana to do it at least twice. But maybe she doesn't. Oh my god, are you kidding me, lady? I don't have enough to actually, you know, do the miracle art. But I don't want to drag this out, so let's just see what we can get done. We were so close. So close. What were we, like seven AP away? Oh, and then now she decides to do it. So yeah, there's not a lot to comment on here. I think you should be okay going into this fight. If you made it this far, I don't see why this would be the place where you die if you have the same equipment as I do and you're the same level as I am. I mean, even without spiriting, that doesn't do that much. And oh, we're really close. So I will go ahead and spirit here. We'll get our heals up. She shouldn't do too much to us. She should attack and then maybe try to glare. She may or may not have the mana for another Darkness Typhoon, but I'm not fucking, I'm not fucking scared of this bitch. Although, I will always feel sorry for her. I still feel bad that, you know, she thought Court was digging her, and it turned out that Court was only using her as a pawn in his plan for world domination. You know, the typical ill-fated love story. <laughs> it happens to us all, Zora. Okay, this should be it for her. I cannot imagine she has enough mana for the fourth one, but I could always be wrong. The thing I think that I hate the most about this is just that it takes a really long time. And we're getting a little dangerously close, so I might just take a couple of turns to bring us up. Just so we don't die here, because how garbage would that be, friends? I think that'd be pretty bad. So I'm thinking we should only have a couple minutes remaining for this one. I will spirit through. Yes. Okay, so she is a fourth turn of this. So honestly, if you guys wanted to, like I said, coming into this, just alternating attack and spiriting, you know, regardless of whether she's going to glare, she's going to summon or cast a darkness typhoon. You know, that'll at least see you through until she's done with all of this crap. But yeah, without your life grail, it would have been game over a while ago. Am I right? So I'm going to probably spend like four turns just spiriting until I'm back in the white. And if it can get rid of her garbage, then I think it's the way to go. Because I really don't want to die. I'm not too afraid of it, but... Okay, so she has much more mana than I remembered her having. But it's kind of good because she's sort of wasting her shit. But then again, we're wasting our turns too, right? Kind of dicking around with her crap. I am going to guess she surely has to be towards the end. She does ran, run out of mana. I do promise you that. <laughs> I haven't done this recently enough to recall how much mana she has, but I know for a fact there will be a point where she will no longer be summoning this crap. Jesus Christ, Zora. Maybe this is why Court doesn't like you. You're repetitive. You shriek. And honestly, she looks kind of like a weird bird thing. She didn't used to look like that, so I don't know if she is... Also merged with the Simsuru. I'm not sure what's really happening there with her, but, you know, I guess it, <laughs> it fucking happens. Become evil, you kind of give yourself over to darkness. Things happen, mistakes were made. All right. If I can just fucking get in the white and she can be done with this. Oh, okay. Well. 
we're just not getting anywhere. She's now passed this, like, what, eight times? I don't even know what to say, Zora, other than you need to stop. But she didn't do nearly as much there, so maybe she's kind of wearing herself out. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she's equally agitated with us because she's probably like, will you just fucking die? And the answer is no. You will not just fucking die. Will you just fucking die? It'd be nice. It'd be nice on both ends. But we're finally getting somewhere. Please tell me that's... <sighs> All right, you guys. <laughs> she is going a little nuts. But, you know, that's why this is round 12. It is not meant to be a fun time by any means. And it's, it's truly not. But the prize that you're going to get for doing all this, because, oh, yeah, did you guys think we were just doing this for the sake of doing it? <laughs> Fuck no. We are doing this because there is actually a nice reward. But we'll check that out in, hopefully, a couple of minutes. Oh, thank God. She might be done, though. I'm not going to risk it yet. I'm going to spirit again. She was doing that at the start where she wasn't necessarily going back and forth. But it does look like she might be done. She might be done. She might finally be out of mana. Can it be? Can we actually just start attacking her? Oh, okay. We're good, friends. We are good. I guess she had enough to cast it, what was it, 10 times? I don't know. But watch, now that I am attacking her. Oh, what am I doing? I should have done my miracle art. Guys, I am just like, my eyes are glazed over from her nonsense. But we're fine now because she cannot cast her crap. And with the defender chain, she should not be doing more than 200 damage each turn she takes. So she can't do anything. She can't cast Flare, which doesn't matter. It's not going to affect us anyway. She can't cast her crap. Oh, well, you know, if we miss it, then she'll do 400, but it's fine. And I think I might go ahead and just do some spiriting. Just so we can do a Miracle Arts on her to make this a little bit faster. She's not, she's not playing around. But we're to the point where I think... The rest of this should be fairly straightforward. It's about going through the motions so that we can overcome her and find ourselves with that nice prize. So the damage she'll do here should be enough. Oh my god, please, get one attack in. All right, there we go. I was going to say I'll be a little bit annoyed if we don't have that 100 there, but we got it. So there you go. Oh, she better not... Better fucking not. We should be able to get about 2,000. Oh, yeah. 2,300 off on her. And if we're lucky. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, a freebie turn. I'll take it. And I will spirit as well. Just so we have something that we're working with. And wow. The turn that we're spiriting, she gets an attack in. I guess that's how it goes. And uh, we don't really have enough to do anything too special, so let's just finish this up in style. I'm thinking maybe three to four more rounds and she should be dead. She's not doing too much, but I guess you could argue we're not really doing too much to her at this point either. But you know, we're getting so close to getting a thousand damage off on her each time that it's really just a matter of... Can we persevere and can we take her down? Now again, like I mentioned, okay, we did nothing to her either. That kind of sucks, but but that's okay, that's okay. So like I was telling you guys earlier, if you want to and you think it's better for you, you can take a couple of turns of spiriting just so that you have enough AP to... Ooh, she's falling over, so yeah, she's definitely almost dead. But just so that you have enough AP to be doing those miracle arts... Because it can make a little bit of a difference. I am not going to do that because <laughs> we are already at an hour and like almost 15 minutes. So we want to take her out 
I might want to go ahead and spirit though so she's not. Oh my god, because do you know how much that would fucking blow, you guys? If she killed us right now, I would legit rage quit. I would not be very happy. But you know what? If we want to, why don't we just have our miracle art be the way of finishing her off? She should, should die. You never know, but I'm thinking she cannot. Oh my god. All right, that's fine. She knows it's coming. And I love that we're getting so many free turns to go ahead and heal up all the way. We're still in the yellow, but that's fine. This should hopefully be enough to take her out, as long as she doesn't block too much of what we're dishing out. So, Thea Zora wouldn't want to be ya. Come on, Va. Oh, that bitch! <gasps> She's still alive! What? Nonsense. Well, if we get another freebie round off here. Oh, which. Nope, we did not, but that's okay. I'm just gonna auto attack her, even though we only have 20 AP. I think. Oh, can we just block everything? That'd be great. Because I know she can. Oh, she can do upwards of 500. We'll just go ahead and spirit, whatever. And then this might be our last turn. I guess I could try to do, let's do something fancy. We only have 72, but we can go with Burning Flare just to see something different. And then we'll have 20 left over. Uh, let's do, Power Punch won't really make a difference, but we can do Hyper Elbow and then whatever. And this should be game over for her. And like I noted, I promise there is a prize for all of this crap. <laughs> We're not doing this just for glory and honor. We are doing this for the sake of finding ourselves with something nice in tow. And in spite of how long it took, oh God, and the, the tears on Vaughn's face. Yeah, I don't know why Gala has his... Oh, did you guys think it was over? Ha 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 ha. I lied. Just messing with you. It is definitely not over. <laughs> Oh, I know you guys are like, Rabbit, no! Okay, I know. I know, I know. So Zora is not the last, like I was saying. But I'm trying to cheer you guys up and let you know that there is a prize for all of this. But this last round, again, is not too bad. It's, again, just a series of alternating your spirits with your attacks. <laughs> and then for realsies, I promise, I fucking promise that you will be done after round 13. So never fear. But yeah, there is a prize. So in spite of how obnoxiously long this will take, we can do it. And he doesn't do nearly as much damage as Zora did. But, you know, just make sure you're following through with the same strategy that you were using for Zora, and this will be no problem at all. And yeah, kind of like when we recently fought him, Ooh. That one is the clone? I think this is the real one. Yeah. Nice try, though. Nice try. Woo! But he can pack a wall up himself if he gets them all in. But we're not going to worry too much about it. Because I am going to do literally the same thing I did when we were dealing with Zora. You just want to minimize the impact of his shadow break. Ignore his clone as best as you can. And then all should be well. And all should be good. And then as I shared already, I promise, there are no more surprises. You're not going to suddenly be fighting like, uh, what was his name? Jet. Not Jet. This is Jet. Um, you won't suddenly be fighting like Court or anyone else. I mean, I think honestly, we've taken out everyone, haven't we? I think we have. So I'm going to take an extra couple of rounds to Spirit just for the sake of bringing my HP back up. I don't think he does as much as Zor. Maybe he does technically do more damage if he gets everything off. But I think Zora is more annoying to deal with because her animation takes longer for Darkness Typhoon. 
so the fight just feels much more prolonged. I don't know. It's just Darkness Typhoon. It's a cool spell to see the first like two or three times. But especially as you guys noted in the previous fight, she did it about 10 times. And it's just, I don't know. If I had any criticism of the game with its animations, I would say it would just come down to the fact that, I don't know, a lot of spells just take a very, very long time to be executed, which, I don't know, it blows a little bit. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm a little bit scared about fighting him with only 1,000 HP. Fortunately, he didn't do too much to us right here. I almost want to wait until... I'm in the white. So if it's easier for you guys, like I don't know if watching this whole fight is gonna really benefit you. Thinking about it, I may or may not cut out a bit of the fight with Zora. I don't know, but maybe we'll keep it in real time. It's not, I mean, this is kind of how it goes, right? Regardless of what level you are, this is what you'll be facing when you go through the master course. I would say a really nice way of summarizing the master course isn't just that it's, oh yeah, I know, right guys? This is a place where we can die. So that's why I'm thinking, uh, maybe just cutting a little bit, getting myself up and then bringing you back when we're in a bit of a better position to be dealing our own shit to him. Because I, I don't recall if he runs out of mana. I honestly don't know. I would be interested in hearing if he does. I can't think if he does, but who knows? He may or may not. I would imagine that like Zora, he also has mana, so it could just be as simple as you just have to kind of endure all of this. So why don't we let him finish executing all of this crap just to save you some time. So what I'll do is I'll leave in everything with Zora. I will go ahead and spare you what might be another 10 minutes of me just spiriting and maybe every couple of spirits getting off one set of miracle arts because I don't want to die. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll see Vaughn's spirits and then we will put things on hold for a little bit and I will bring you back when I've noticed that he is no longer going through the motions of casting his shit. So. I will be right back, everybody. Uh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Fucking 35 minutes later, and I'm thinking, surely no more than two more turns of actually attacking him can remain before he dies. I, I just can't imagine that he would have significantly more HP left. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, my friends. <laughs> Woo! So, I'm gonna actually take a minute to recap, and I am definitely going to cut out, like, all of that. Oh my gosh. This has genuinely been about 35 fucking minutes later, and that 35 fucking minutes isn't because this fight has been super difficult so much as it's just been, you have to spend roughly three turns spiriting before you can even attack him, so it basically prolongs the fight three times what it really could have been, you know, if Vaughn, or not Vaughn, if Noah and Gala had also been in tow. I guess what I was starting to say was if Vaughn, Noah, and Gala were all tackling him together. I mean, it would even be less than that because you'd have multiple people doing DPS, right? So, just to kind of recap, uh, he hits pretty fucking hard. I don't know, I'm kind of torn as to whether he or Zora are more obnoxious to kind of deal with. Uh, so Zora, her spells went on for significantly longer, which prolonged the fight in that way, and that you had a lot of animations you had to kind of dick around with. As for him, after about mm, three, maybe four times of doing his spell, he was out of mana. So I just wanted to confirm that my initial thought was correct and that he does run out of MP. So you don't have to be too afraid of taking damage from that. That was hardly a problem. Like right after I cut the camera, he did it maybe two more times. So easy as pie. But just to note, he can do a bit of damage if you're not blocking most of his attacks. So this isn't anything that caused me too much trouble. I would say for each turn, he would only do anywhere from like 99 to maybe occasionally 500 damage. But 
I never really got too incredibly low. It just wasn't a problem. So, again, I just want to reiterate that I think the defender chain made the difference here for me, at least in me surviving. Because if he got off a full string of attacks, he would be doing about a thousand damage to you each time it was his turn. So I very much want to emphasize that if you're going to try to negotiate with my accessories, I really wouldn't switch out the defender chain because I think that was critical to my victory here. Granted, this fight took a million goddamn years because he would attack me and then because I was blocking most of his attacks, it took forever to get the AP to do the miracle art. But once you got the miracle art off, you were doing anywhere, you know, depending on how much he blocked from 2000 to 2900 damage. So I didn't think this fight was actually that bad so much as it was just fucking long. So yeah, you guys, that is the fucking master course. I. Again, just want to recap something I said earlier that I'm in the lower level 40s taking this on. I think being around level 45 might be better, but obviously you can do it. And I wouldn't say anything was too hairy for us so much as it was just oh, taxing on the spirit. So good thing for me. I had Golden Girls running on in the background and I sure enjoyed the episode I watched. So it said, and the winner is Vaughn. Vaughn, what a fight. Simply amazing. Congratulations, Vaughn. You've made it through the master level. To commemorate his victory, we present Vaughn with a war god icon. So Vaughn now has the war god icon. Yes, my friends, that was our prize alongside 13,830 tokens, which we don't even need, but whatever, we'll just take it. Oh my god, you guys. I am so exhausted. That fight was just, oh, 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 oh. My brain is officially mush, and I'm sure if you watch this whole thing, yours is probably, probably not sitting too pretty either. So let me find this actual bad boy. Oh, I'm right on it. So the war guide god icon why it's such a great prize and actually worth like the hour and a half that we devoted to doing all this although you know if you skipped the beginner an expert you know you could shave off about 20 minutes from this video so let's just say the hour you devoted to getting through the master course does grant you with the war god icon which gives you attack times two which is exactly what it sounds like you get to attack twice in a row Perfect, right? This is a very nice item, and I think it is worth just undertaking the master level in spite of what a pain in the ass it can potentially be for you. So I shared with you guys my strategy with accessories. Again, just to recap, this is it in a plain view. I've got the Defender Chain, the Life Grail, and the Wonder Amulet. I, I honestly think this is the best strat that I've seen. Presented. I mean, I know a lot of people kind of theory craft as to, well, maybe you'd want to have more counterattack or maybe, I don't know, just something that raises your raw DPS is better so that when you are getting the opportunities to be attacking, you're dealing more damage than I was doing. I don't know. It's totally up to you, but this is what I would 100% recommend. It's never steered me wrong. Obviously, I didn't die because fucking losing to either Zora or Jet himself would suck donkey balls. So the final thing that I do want to say, just to kind of come back to my little mini trolling you guys when I was like, oh yeah, Zora's it. And then ta-da, we had Jet. So I think... And again, I can't vouch for this because I never experienced this, but this is what I have read multiple times and people swear up and down this is true. If you attempt to undertake the master course prior to meeting Jet, I believe is the warning, then you don't actually fight him. And as such, you can't get the War God icon. So I guess it's scripted to where you're supposed to face off against that round 13 battle before you can receive the War God icon. And I... I'm guessing at least where the alleged glitch comes in is that you, you know, you go through this, Zora is your final round, and then since there's no jet, it just automatically kind of jots you down or codes you as though you are the victor and as though you've completed it. So when you do try to come back and do it again later and take on jet, it doesn't register as you actually defeating the full master course again with him so you don't get the war god icon now just to repeat again i'm not saying this is true this is just what i've read and heard numerous times so that is why i just have always opted to wait until now and again just because trying to take on the master course much earlier on in the game i don't even know how you would do it i can't imagine doing this 
any earlier than level 40, but I mean, if someone's got a strat that works, you know, pre-level 40, definitely let me know down below. But that is it, you guys. This has been the longest fucking video I've probably made for any Let's Play. So we're going to call it quitsies here. So when we do resume in our upcoming episode, we have one last bonus set of things to undertake. And the reason why I say it's a set of things is because we are going to be taking on the optional boss. And I'm going to demonstrate for you two strategies to undertake that confrontation. One is going to be an easy mode, kind of, I guess it's a, an exploit, I'll just say, to take him down. And then the other way will be us doing it the legit way. And I will, again, isolate all of that to one episode. Hopefully that will not cap the 45 minute mark but we'll just have to see honestly nothing can probably get longer than this video so without further ado i'm tapping out thank you very much for watching if you made it this far kudos to you you deserve all the hugs and all of the cake in the world so thanks again for watching everyone i am your host rabbit and this is my 100 percent item guide and walkthrough for legend of lagaya i will see you in our upcoming video my friends